Were you guys expecting Gene to pop up? Uh, he is. He is here too. He, he's hiding behind. Oh desk, hey! Like, <laughs> like normal. <laughs> I made it to LA. Today is the actual shoot day for uh, the Being series of Gene. Are you nervous? I, I, um, yeah, I'm very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like being on camera? Not really. Well, today's your day. It's uh, also like the fact that it's you. You, you behind the camera, it's like almost like, oh. Like if it's just me recording, I, I'm gonna delete all this footage later anyways, but. How cool is Gene's office? Studio. I very much like this space. Here, let me let me give let me give you guys quick. So this is Gene's studio office. Looking good, man. I like your lighting setup. It's very Thank nice. You. 120D with a little mini soft box. Over here I got a Westcott uh, flex light. Oh. Filming space, editing space. Yeah, so basically the reason why this desk looks like a disaster is because we're trying to film here. So there's always a mess on one of these desks. I just dump yeah. it all here. Yeah. You're editing. Dump it all here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like your strategy. I think that's enough shenanigans. Uh, I'm gonna try to uh, show you guys, this is super meta. I'm showing you the behind the scenes of the, kind of like the behind the scenes <laughs> of Gene's life, uh, what it's like being Gene. This right here, Sam, he's gonna, he's gonna help film the behind the scenes of the, of the behind the scenes. No, Sam's gonna be filming the behind the scenes of you filming the behind the scenes of me, of me, Look. Talking to Sam about editing a video about how to shoot a documentary. This is a giant. This I'm, is... I'm, con I'm as best I can uh, while I'm working on this little episode. I'm gonna try to show you guys uh, the behind the scenes and why I'm doing the things I'm doing uh, to kind of give you guys a little bit more perspective into how I make a little bit more of a high quality documentary video. Uh, I hope you guys like this. <laughs> See ya, Tyler. See ya. Okay, we're back at the office, back in Canada, and that whole documentary that I'm showing you guys the behind the scenes of now is out. If you haven't seen it yet, you should go watch it now or after this. Uh, a lot of you guys have been giving really, really positive feedback, so I'm definitely gonna do more. Uh, suggestions on who you think should be next for the Being series? I may be thinking Becky and Chris. What do you guys think? Every time I do a doc, uh, doesn't matter if it's big or small, I realize how hard it is to make documentaries. And so I'm gonna give you guys a few tips uh, to help you guys out. First, let's talk about gear. Don't mind the boxes and mess. We're still trying to figure out the office. Gear is especially important for documentaries just because you're usually running with a smaller crew and you have to be nimble to move around because things can change really quickly. I still want high quality, so I went with the C300 Mark II uh, with the Sigma 18 to 35 mil. The whole doc was shot on this camera, and then I have the small HD 502 monitor here. There's no real reason why I use the 502. I just, I have it, so I use it. And then the Rode NTG3 mic right here. Also, Gene was supposed to uh, provide me the Easy Rig. Uh, I left mine at home because Gene had one, and then uh, apparently his is broken, so I'm breaking my back today. Uh, not as fun. I do not recommend it. Highly recommend having an easy rig. Uh, I miss mine. But this setup is working great. Gene had a budget version of an easy rig, um, but it was not good. I highly recommend uh, shilling out a little bit more money and getting a legit easy rig. I'll, I'll show you guys what that is real quick. This weird contraption is called an easy rig. Basically, you just attach your camera to here, and instead of your arms taking all the weight of the camera, especially with a little bit bigger camera, um, it's on your back. It's kind of like a backpack that you're wearing with weight in it, instead of your arms carrying all of the camera weight. I highly, highly recommend an easy rig if you're filming a documentary. And I think the Canon cinema cameras right now are some of the best documentary cameras. Because of the mix in uh, the right size, it's not too heavy, so you can still use it as a one-man crew. You don't need an AC and people holding the camera and all of that stuff, but the quality is still definitely there. Plus, autofocus. Autofocus is a massive, massive help when you're shooting documentaries, especially interviews. So. That's the gear that I use. The boys are still no, no, trying to like figure out how to make this thing out. street legal with the uh, doors off. There's a way, I just gotta figure it out. So like with anything, I have a game plan going into this little mini doc, but at the same time, I have no idea exactly what the story's gonna be. So I have a game plan and I know things that I wanna ask Gene and things that I wanna find out, but I'm also, covering a little bit more than I normally would. 
so that I have room to take the story kind of where it wants to go. In my mind, those are the best kind of documentaries that kind of just show you what happened and not just you hearing my voice uh, through Gene's talking. If you're filming a documentary, you still need a game plan. Even though you don't know exactly what's gonna happen throughout the day, you need some sort of game plan in terms of uh, what kind of doc you want to make, what kind of uh, things are you trying to capture, what style you're trying to do things, you need a game plan. Do not underestimate documentaries because you will not be able to figure it out on the day when you're actually filming. Uh, it's just way too hectic and chaotic that you'll be completely lost without a game plan. Gene, how's it been so far being the subject of a little mini documentary? It's, it's quite strange. It's very strange. Like usually it's me filming myself or Sam. Yeah, it's a little bit freeing because like usually if I were in charge of this video, I'd have to think about like, oh, what I'm gonna have to make sure I say enough things and how I'm gonna cut it together, but I'm just doing my own thing now and just leaving it up to you and we'll see how bad you can make me look. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually really excited to see what is going on in your head because right now I have no idea what you're gonna do with this video. To you, you it just feels like a normal day. Eh? Yeah, pretty much, except for I just have a famous YouTuber following me around with a camera and you know, there's that. <laughs> Part of the game plan is you wanna try and figure out the story. Just because you have a topic, like Gene is technically my topic here, that doesn't mean I have a story. Just because I have a really interesting subject or topic, it doesn't make it an interesting story. So you need some sort of storyline and what helps is to think about the different kinds of conflict, uh, whether it's man versus man or man versus nature or man versus self. In this case, I think it was uh, a man versus self. It's kind of this story of how, how crazy hard it is to be a YouTuber and how much it takes to make YouTube videos and to keep a channel going. Uh, so I think it's, it's kind of like an internal battle, although it could be uh, man versus machine, you know, the machine of YouTube. <laughs> Again, you have no idea what's gonna happen once you start filming, but you can still think of some of the possible themes, some of the possible conflicts that could be part of your story. Do this beforehand, it will influence everything you do on the day. And so I'm constantly evaluating things that are happening. Is this part of the story that's building? And this is this part of the narrative or is this something separate? And if it's part of the story, if this is part of the narrative, then I'm filming it and then I might ask some questions throughout it. If it's not, then I'd just take a breather and uh, save my back. How do you like Gene's process? Uh, does, does he have a process? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what he's doing? <laughs> <I'm> no. <just kidding. laughs> this is so typical YouTube. I run this all the time. You're like, oh, we're gonna get this thing, do this thing, and then you're like, nope. Yeah, that's not gonna work out. Something goes wrong, and you gotta change the whole game plan and still make it work because you gotta post tonight or tomorrow or whenever. Like, you just, just gotta do it. Just gotta make it happen. Oh, Documentary wow. filmmaking is not easy. You always have to be oh, on the ball, I, always have to be thinking, concentrating. Is want. this important? Like, is this important? Like, Constantly you asking yourself, does this fit your narrative? And I, should I be filming this? Or like, did I get enough coverage? Did I get a wide shot? Did I get a tight shot? Do I have enough to edit from this to that? You like, you're constantly front. thinking. At the end of the day, um, I'm exhausted. Yeah, just now with YouTube videos, I recommend not to over capture. I, I only film the things that I know are gonna go into the video, but with documentaries, it is the complete opposite. Over capture as much as possible. Get everything, do not miss any of those moments. Because even with a game plan, an idea of what the story could be, you still don't know for sure and a much better storyline or a much better conflict could arise. So just capture everything so that you can make the best documentary in post. Over capture. Okay, so we're in this uh, middle of this like deserty location where we're gonna do some off-roading, but of course, the fence is closed, that's YouTube life, so uh, Gene's trying to finish his video using this little pathway. A little bit of run up uh, movie magic to finish up his video. I'm sweating it up with this big boy. Really, really missing this smaller EOS R. Documentary filmmaking is very, very hard work. Gene, how are you feeling about your video? We're making it work. It's not, uh, it's not ideal. W with the situation, the footage isn't gonna be our proudest work but uh we're just gonna we're just gonna work with what we got right now and what can you do look terrible <laughs> <laughs> again this is a great case of 
is this part of this little documentary story, little little thing that I'm doing of Gene, or is this something totally different? Um, and sometimes you don't know, so it's better to just capture it instead of wishing that you did capture it because you can't go back. Documentary stuff happens once. If you didn't get it that one time, then you didn't get it. So it's better to try to get as much as possible. For example, for my YouTube videos, I only really film the things that are gonna be going into the video that I know for sure are going in. This stuff, I'm just filming everything. I'm filming so much stuff in order to be able to tell the story that kind of emerges from, uh, from this day of filming. And don't worry so much about making it perfect. It's much better in a documentary to get something than nothing. Even if it's overexposed or you have ND filter swiping through like I had multiple times, it's way better to actually capture the thing that's happening than to be overly worried about how good it looks right now. So do what you can to make it look good, but don't worry too much about it. Just a quick, quick little Pro tip uh, for dock shooting, you really wanna keep your camera on as much as possible because otherwise you're definitely gonna miss moments where something important's starting to happen. You're like, oh shoot, I need to record this. And then you start turning on your camera, you're 100% gonna miss it. But uh, just leave your camera on, it's okay. It's gonna use a little bit of battery, but it's worth it. Just carry extra batteries. So we're just finishing up kind of this section of uh, the documentary, I guess, going back to Back to Gene's place and then uh, Gene's car kind of broke <laughs> a little bit. So this is not, this is real drama. This is not, <laughs> we're not making up stuff. This is not like a, like a TLC TV show. This is, this is real life. Stuff happens. Doesn't matter uh, even if you have how many hundreds of thousands of subscribers like Gene does, your car still breaks down and you get screwed. Now we're stuck somewhere. We gotta figure out. How to fix the car. That dock life. Okay, so we've done most of the filming for the day, but probably the most important thing is still to come. That's what we're gonna do next is the interviews. I like to always do kind of a sit down interview or some sort of version of that. Cause that's when you can really ask more questions and kind of take a deep dive into some of the themes and some of the things that we've come across throughout the day. So I've actually been writing notes throughout the day and already beforehand, I had different questions that I wanna ask Gene and some of those I've already asked him throughout the day, but I'm also gonna reword them and ask them again so I can kind of cut back and forth between uh, things that happened during the day and then the interview footage uh, where he's sitting down at his office um, and I can kind of cut back and forth between that and play off the story and then the things that he's saying in the interview. Uh, that's super, super important. And then also the things that we end up kind of diving into in the interview, I can use that then to kind of finish off the story, find a, a good, nice ending for it. So I'm kind of thinking about the stuff that's happening before and then whatever happens in the interview, I'll use that to finish off the video. So after the interview gets influenced by the interview also. And I thought it makes the most sense to do the interview here in Gene's office because this is kind of iconic to him. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do it right here. Uh, and uh, I, th I think it'll turn out real good. I'm excited about the stuff that's happened so far. There's been a lot of conflict, uh, <laughs> way more conflict than I expected, uh, but that always, that always makes for a more interesting little documentary. So uh, yeah, it's been fun so far. A lot of work, very tired, and still a lot to do. These are long, long days. We've already been shooting for a long time and they're still Lots to do. And make sure you're going after the story. Interviewing is actually, believe it or not, one of the hardest parts about making documentaries. Interviews, people think they're super easy. People think that you just need to ask some questions and all of a sudden they're crying and they're telling you all of these amazing, that doesn't work like that. You need to prepare for it and figure out what questions you could ask, practice. Practicing is really, really important. And please, please, please do not try to wing an interview. There's been a few times where I've been filming somebody else interviewing and they just try to wing it and it's the most awkward thing ever. And the interview just ends up being really, really bad. And if you're getting to a point where you're having to essentially feed lines, say like, hey, can you just say this thing? Um, you've lost it. Like you need to figure out a way to naturally get those things because if you're just feeding lines, it's not gonna be very good. Do not underestimate how hard it is to do a good interview. We're done. I just did like an hour's worth 
uh, maybe two hours worth of interviewing, and that's not that long, but when you're on an easy rig and you're doing it handheld, it feels very long and very sweaty. And at the end of the day, just know documentaries are super hard. They seem like they're easy. I just gotta follow around this person, but they are so hard. It's long days, it's really mentally taxing, and it's tons and tons of editing. But no, at the end of the day, every time I've made some sort of documentary and I've got it done and I've put it out there, it, the feeling is incredible. It's a really cool feeling, so I still, Highly recommend it, but know that it is not easy at all. It's so different being on the other side of the camera. What I mean by that is like, I'm always talking to a camera, obviously, but I know what I need to say to create the video because I already have the video sort of in my head. But when it's you, like I, like, I have no idea what's going on in your head. You're probably like building out the, the mini doc in your head. And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to say to make the video. I'm glad you said that because that's like my way of doing documentaries is I don't wanna influence what you're gonna say because if you know what's in my head, then you'll start playing to that that story and I'd rather just like pluck it out of you in a natural way. I appreciate you. Thanks yeah. for letting me do this series episode on you. And uh, I think I have to go back to Toronto and edit for a few weeks. Yeah, you'll, you'll know what it's like to edit one of my videos because like I repeat the same thing over and over. No and wonder over. it takes 20, 40 hours. <laughs> <laughs>